So this is the best terror raid event they've actually ever done. I think they finally nailed how to do these events and actually make them good. Hello everyone, today we're talking about the run-up to the level 7 star Mewtwo terror raid event with the prepare the offense, prepare the support, prepare the offense, prepare the support, cycle back and forth. The prepare the offense is going to be ending today, but the prepare the support is going to be starting later today, and then after about a week it will cycle back to prepare the offense again, and then when Mewtwo is ongoing, it will be doing the support ones. But this is going to be a bit of a breakdown of all of them, the best way to counter everything, and are these raids worth it? But spoiler alert, they are. And then we'll be getting into the Mewtwo Terror Raid counters, which is going to have its own dedicated video later on, but going into a few of the things right now. But spoiler alert, it is new. But yeah, so for right now, the Prayer the Offense raids are incredibly worth it. We'll start off with the one raid that is going to be a common thread through all of these two cycles, and that is the Blissey raids. Holy crap, these are worth it. You have a 70% chance, well, a little over a 70% chance, about a 71.5% chance. You have a 71% chance of having a Blissey Terror Raid give you 5 Terror Shards of 3 random typings, and then getting 7 of the type you are fighting against. So if you're doing a Water Blissey Terror Raid, you have, you'll get 7 Terror Shards of the Water type, and then 5 Terror Shards of 3 random typings, so Dragon Steel and Fairy Sight. But... The rest of that, the about 28.5% chance, is you'll get a Blissey Raid that gives you 45 Terra Shards, which is 9 sets of 5 of 9 different typings, and then 16 Terra Shards of the type you're fighting. So, yeah, very worth it for if you're changing any Terra types. But before we get into the rest of the raids, please don't forget to leave a like, subscribe for more, and we will be raiding Mewtwo when it comes time, so feel free to hop in. Bring your Mew. Let's get that mightiest mark in your show. I'm pretty well stocked on my Terra Shards because I tend to rate a bit compulsively, but this is fantastic for anyone. Especially the upcoming competitive stuff and preparing legitimate teams, these raids are worth it. And even if you're not going for competitive and you're just going for Mewtwo raids, these raids also drop vitamins to help you get other things. As well as just they tend to drop a lot of cell fodder items. Experience candies are pretty much flying everywhere. You're getting a ton of them with Blissey raids, a ton of our candies, experience candies large, and just everything you really need. The best ways to beat these Blissey Raids is actually not Iron Hands. It's actually Flame Orb Guts, Facade, Belly Drum, Earthquake, Ursa Luna. The reason for this is Belly Drum will instantly maximize your attack stat, giving you four times your base attack stat, and then Flame Orb Guts procs, and then gives you a 50% boost. So we're doing six times normal damage. With Facade, it doubles the power of Facade when you are status, as well as it doesn't have the burn, but Guts actually already negates the burn attack drop. Meaning, you're pretty much going to be one-shotting everything. You you will one-shot these Blissey in the next year. Iron Hands also works fantastic for it. They really can't do anything to Iron Hands. The best thing they have is size of a toss. You can easily set a Belly Drum and Sweep. Now, the Hydreigon and Scizor Wave, the Prepare the Offense, and somewhat similar apply for Prepare the Defense. The Prepare the Offense Wraith will drop the three vitamins of the stat they work for. So, Prepare the Offense will drop the Carbos, Protein, and Calcium, it will always drop a minimum of two of all three of these, with a chance of dropping additional ones, as well as four Terra Shards of the type you are raiding. If you're the host, you get eight Terra Shards of the type you're raiding, so you're the host of a Water Scizor raid, you'll get eight Water Terra Shards. And a chance of ability patches, it seems. It seems the first one you do will always give you two ability patches, from what I've been seeing. And those, again, great self fodder items. Experience candies, great self fodder items. You will get things like pearl strings, bottle caps, all very valuable items you can just easily sell if you have a wealth of them. So money should not really be a problem with this, especially the ability patch. They sell for 125,000 poke dollars per ability patch, as well as, again, the vitamins. All you need is to do 13 raids of this at absolute most, and you can instantly max out the stats of whatever attacker you're going to be using, max out their speed, and then, like, the same is going to apply for the defenders, where you get the iron, zinc, and HP up. And now, the best ways of dealing with these supporters and the attackers. The best way of beating Hydreigon is, in fact, a supporter for this. Grimmsnarl almost completely bodies Hydreigon. It can do almost nothing to it. Spirit Break, Fake Tears, opens the door for Special Attack of Glucumin and Steamroll. For Scizor, Skeletors is not the great play. I actually thought it was originally, but no. Uh, unaware doesn't really help it because it has Night Slash, which can do some damage, but it's a critical hits, as well as focus energy. Your best one for this, again, Iron Hands. There is almost nothing Scizor can do against Iron Hands. 
almost everything it has is resisted. The only moves that are neutral are pretty much Slash and Wing Attack, which are not doing a whole lot of damage to Iron Hands. You can easily set up that Belly Drum and just punch. First Luna also does work for this, however, the fight can go on significantly longer, so Iron Hands is a little bit of a preferable option. Uh, Azumarill also does work very well, but Iron Hands is, the, the, is strictly better. Now for countering the Grimmsnarl support raids and the Hatterene support raids. Grimmsnarl raids, countering them is actually going to be relatively easy. Dark types are pretty much going to be your go-to for this. The reason is that Prankster will completely fail against dark types. So Thunder Wave, which is the biggest issue coming from Grimmsnarl, will simply not work. Also alternative is you could bring your own Grimmsnarl and have set up a Misty Terrain. King, that actually makes King Gambit an ideal selection. It is a dark type, so it is immune to things such as Thunder Wave or any other form of status debuffing. And it has Defiance, so if it goes for a move such as Spirit Break, that'll jack your attacks up into absurdity. Iron Hands also does work for a bit of a similar reason. The most damaging thing that Grim Snarl can do is actually Thunder Wave, which Iron Hands, being an electric type naturally, is completely immune to. Goldengo would be a good idea for this if it weren't for the fact that Grimmsnarl does get Spirit Break, meaning it will continuously debuff your special attack, as well as is weak to dark, so there is some associated issues with that. Again, these are very likely to be dropping Iron, Zinc, and HP ups to allow you to build your supporters, which again, is just very useful. The Hatterene raids are where things actually get a lot more tricky. I actually have said for a long time, Hatterene raids are pretty much one of the five raids I do not do, and I actually have a video coming out soon about really the five terror raids you really shouldn't be doing, one of them being Hatterene. The reason for this is Hatterene likes that up Calm Mind. It has pretty good typing offensively to cover a lot of your best supporters, and it's just all around a pretty obnoxious to deal with. It gets Thunder Wave, Calm Mind, Dazzling Lane, Moonblast, it just kind of hits everything. So, what's really the good way of handling these? Not a whole lot of great options. Grimmsnarl is, I would say, generally your best because of access to Spirit Break, but if Hatterene is just stacking Calm Minds into Oblivion, not really able to do anything to that. So, your best thing to handle this is actually things such as Clear Smog or Haze users as a backup in the event Hatterene starts boosting. This will interfere if someone is setting up Acid Sprays or Spirit Breaks or just any form of debuffing, but it is better to have the chance of preventing Hatterene from setting up infinite comp mines and then just blasting you into oblivion like it wants to do than not having it and potentially getting completely face melted and wasting time. For this, I would recommend potentially Armor Rouge, but again, there is the potential that Hatterene will have something like Shadow Ball, so there is, there is associated risks. There, there's really nothing that is a good Haze user or a good Clear Smog user that is not in some way pressured by Hatterene. The best ones for these and the ones that really aren't pressured at least horribly are your Dark Poison types such as Overquill and Cilian Quillfish, which is you get Haze, and the Stunky Family, which also gets Acid Spray, which is a good supporting move, as well as, of all things, Vaporeon, which actually would be quite good for this. Though, do not use Fake Tears on it. Hatterene has a chance of having Magic Bounce, which will immediately reflect that Fake Tears right back at you. Haze also works through the Terra Shield, because it is a targeting everyone move, it bypasses the Terra Shield. Varum, as in Rev of Room, also does get access to this, so. But it is by Egg moves for most of these, so you will need to use the Mirror Herb to get those moves. But it can work very well. When it comes to your attackers, Iron Hands really doesn't work whilst you're not going to use Iron Hands here. Potentially, Azumarill would be your generally safest option because it is naturally quite bulky, it does outspeed Hattery normally, and it targets the physical defense rather than the special defense, which is potentially what Hattery will be boosting with Calm Mind. You just need to be able to watch out for the very annoying Thunder Wave. Pokemon that would actually be quite good to have on your team that work as support would be, at least for this one, would actually be, in terms of Clear Smog users as well as Acid Spray users, are, of all things, Gastrodon. Well, it is immune to Thunder Wave, so it can do that. It throws out Clear Smog. You generally want Clear Smog over Haze. The main reason for this is Clear Smog is a single target, and Haze would actually remove allies if they have any boosting moves, which would not be good for you. You generally want to have Clear Smog over Haze. So, Clear Smog use that would be good. Gastrodon. Gastrodon and Torkoal are pretty much the ones you're going to want to use for this. Torkoal is also actually resistant to Hatterene's Fairy moves, which are probably its most damaging ones. So, not horrible for that state of affairs. 
But this also could be, this is also the worst case scenario, Hatterene is again, generally very annoying to deal with. We, I know we spent a long time on Hatterene, but now we get into the Mewtwo stuff. Mewtwo is going to be a Psychic type Terror Raid boss. Psychic level 7 Terror Raid boss, it will be level 100, and those stats. Mewtwo's stats far exceed anything we have had for these raids. The closest thing in terms of brute power was actually the Pikachu raids, and the reason for that is it had full Terra Shield from the start, so it was very bulky. Light Ball doubled all of its offensive stats, and that was really absurd in terms of its damage. The difference is, we're now dealing with something that you really can't easily body. Mewtwo is very likely to have Psy Strike, Calm Mind, or a Nasty Plot, Shadow Ball, but I don't think it's going to have a move like Aura Sphere, or Flamethrower, because they're specifically recommending Scissor and Hydreigon. We'll go into this in a little bit more detail when it comes to the full-on Mewtwo Terror Raid counter video, but this is where it seems like Mew may or may not be a good idea. Even with the 20% bump to Mew's stats other than HP and a 50% bump to Mew's HP, unless you have maxed out its HP and you've maxed out its special defense, Shadow Ball with no boost will three-shot Mew, which means regardless of what your Terra type is on your Mew, you're probably not reaching that, and if Mewtwo is actually stealing your Terra Orb Charge, even less so. And if Mewtwo is setting up something like Calm Mind or Nasty Plot, which they have loved doing for previous raid bosses where they have automatically set up moves, that's going to be an even lower number. So Mew may not be the best option here, unless you bring a specific move, Reflect Type. The reason why is that Reflect Type is a move that changes your typing into whatever you're targeting. Now, this is incredibly dependent on what your allies are bringing. So if your allies are bringing, say, something like a Grimmsnarl or Dark types, you actually stand a much better long-term chance against the Mewtwo. This changes your typing, and then makes it so Mewtwo can't really hit you. Again, I don't think Mewtwo's going to have Aura Sphere. I'll go into a little bit more detail on this when it comes to the full-on counter video, but... I don't think, I think Game Freak is deliberately building in a auto win switch onto this Mewtwo. And if someone is bringing in a Dark type or a Dark Poison type, or a Dark Fairy in the case of Grimmsnarl, you pretty much have Mewtwo not able to hit you. It doesn't get moves like Earth Power, so Dark Poisons are incredibly safe. It doesn't get Steel or Fairy moves, so Grimmsnarl is incredibly safe. And this packed down with Mew's insane bulk would make it so Mewtwo basically can't take you down. Your best move is for Mew, because Mew can actually have access to every single TM in the game. You're going to want Struggle Bug and Acid Spray. Reflect Type is a move Mew learns by level up, so all you got to do is go into Remember, and then it'll have Reflect Type. And the reason why for Acid Spray, Struggle Bug, or Snarl, uh, generally Struggle Bug is better, the reason why is that Struggle Bug will always hit. Snarl has a chance of missing, even though Snarl will do a little bit more damage, because if you turn Acid, if you... Even though Snarl will do a little bit more damage if you are a Dark type via Reflect type or you Terrastalize into Dark, it will do more damage. Mew is not really doing a lot of damage as is, so it is better just go to go for long-term survivability and reliability because you will always be able to drop its special attack with Struggle Bug. Acid Spray, again, is the one of the best support moves for raids in general. It's insanely overpowered. Cripples physical, cripples special defense. Which is why I think Mewtwo's probably gonna have access to come like Calm Mind to kind of get around this. Or a move like Mist, which actually makes it so you can't even drop its stats at all. Yeah, so pretty much Acid Spray and Struggle Bug is all you're really gonna need on Mew. Helping Hand could be good to give allies a bit of a jump to power to actually take stuff out. Light Screen or Taunt also could be good, shutting down Mewtwo's potential of actually activating any status moves for itself. But again, Terror Raids, before the raid even begins, they will start setting up status moves. And if Mewtwo instantly leads off with the shield, then you can't really do this at all. But yes, these are by far their best Terror Raid events they have ever done. The Blissey Raids are going on for nearly a month straight where you can easily farm Terror Shards. They must have heard our complaints about how hard it's been to grind Terror Shards and that it is a pain in the, that it is a pain in the nads to actually do this. So, in the final listening. And you can try to like, you can change your Terror Type to anything you need, prepare your stuff extremely easily. It is incredibly easy to farm money in this with the ability patches, the bottle caps, and just all the experience candies you're getting, which are probably going to top off your reserves, and just the self fodder items. You're getting things like pearl strings when you do these raids. And unlike some of the other raids, like the Gimme Ghoul ones, which really didn't, didn't go on that long, 
These give out actually tangible rewards, as well as being far more prolonged. Game Freak is, seems finally listening. I guess they've probably realized they don't want to screw up Mewtwo. If they screwed up Mewtwo, there probably was going to be a lot less forgiveness going around, especially before the DLC. But there also is a little bit of a worry with these Mewtwo Tear Raid events. And that is, if this is not the only one of these, if this means this is how they are releasing other legendaries, it might mean that shiny hunting of legendaries is dead. But we have a video going to be covering this much more comprehensively in the future, and I'm hoping this is a one-time exclusive thing just for Mewtwo, and that there will be some sort of Dynamax Adventures-like system where you can catch another Mewtwo that is shiny huntable. I am hoping that is the case, because I would very much like to shiny hunt Mewtwo with you guys. So please don't forget to leave a like, subscribe for more, ring that bell notification to get notified whenever we go live, get a new video up, and see you guys then. Also, let us know your thoughts on what you think of these whole terror raids. Are you, you know, what are you going out for with them? I mean, I'm doing this for a lot of competitive stuff. Grinding a lot of vitamins is actually quite easy. These Blissey raids you can take down in, like, not even a minute. The other one's about a minute or two. They're very easy to do, and I can just jump past it throughout the night. It's pretty good. But...